Welcome to Audit Archive, where we run you through some of the most questionable and rather atrocious police encounters. Today, we're looking at a case where an officer detained a driver during a traffic stop and then suddenly started to accuse him of carrying drugs in the vehicle. On February 18, 2023, a police sergeant from the Richland Police Department in Mississippi was out on patrol duty when he observed a speeding vehicle that also had tents that appeared to be darker than the legal limit. As per usual protocol, the sergeant pursued the vehicle and eventually pulled the driver over. This encounter started as a usual traffic stop with both parties complying with one another, and nothing appeared to be out of place. Hello, sir. You got your driver's license insurance on you? Yeah, it's in my pocket. Sure, go ahead. Y'all doing all right today? Uh, yeah. Well, my insurance card's on my phone. Sure, that's fine. Go ahead. Who's your, uh, who's your insurance with? Progressive. Progressive? Okay. All right. Uh, I'm pretty sure I got say April 28, 2023. Yeah, okay, sure, yeah, I see that. All right, well look, the reason I'm stopping today, Mr. Alexander, is you're going a little fast, window tent's a little too dark, okay? The speed limit's 45, I'm doing 45, and you came by me, all right? You were obviously faster than me, about 10 miles over to be in fact. So, also your window tent's too dark. Where are you headed to today? I'm just going, why, why? Huh? Why, why um, do you want to know why? Just conversation, just ask where you're going. Huh? McGee. McGee? Okay, you coming from Madison? Is that where y'all live up in Madison? Did somebody else come over here to make a What's that now? I, I'm making sure, like, I live in Ridgewood. You live in Ridgewood? Okay. So. Okay. All right, sure. Well, just sit tight for me, okay? As we've just seen, the sergeant claimed that the driver, Ian Alexander, was going above the speed limit. It's worth noting that the officer made this claim without the use of a radar, but instead through pacing the vehicle. To make things clear, many speeding tickets result from the police officer following or pacing a suspected speeder and using his or her own speedometer to estimate the suspect's speed. As one may expect, this comes with a ton of drawbacks, the most significant one being inaccuracy. It's stated that, for an accurate pace, the officer must keep an equal distance between the patrol car and your car for the entire time of the pace. Otherwise, the officer's speed won't match that of the car he or she is pacing. Keeping a constant distance between the officer's front bumper and the suspect's rear bumper is sometimes called bumper pacing. So in this case, it goes without saying that the likelihood of the sergeant accurately measuring Mr. Alexander's speed to be above the speed limit would be rather low. However, this does not mean that the sergeant cannot cite Mr. Alexander. He is well within his rights to do so, basing it on his own judgment, which could be argued against in court. Anyway, this is where the sergeant decided that he wanted to dig a little deeper into this traffic stop. Watch as he informed dispatch that Mr. Alexander was nervous and that he would pull him out to figure out why that was. The sergeant was simply implying that Mr. Alexander might have had something illegal in his possession. I'm tend to, uh, this dude's just nervous as can be. I'm going to pull him out, talk to him. Check a 27 or something. 800-207-504. 800-207-504. Mr. Alexander, will you step back here and talk to me, please? I guess I can. Yeah, please, if you don't mind. You're not under arrest or anything, I just want to talk to you. Okay, uh, I got I got a uh, concealed carry permit. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Do you have it on you? Do you have the firearm on you? Yeah, it's in just my waistband. On okay, the just don't do me a favor, don't reach for it. That's okay. all I ask. Just keep your hands up there, okay? As seen in the footage, the sergeant walked up to the vehicle and asked if Mr. Alexander would step out to come and speak with him. 
Now, there may be some confusion as to whether Mr. Alexander was obliged to agree. It's generally understood that the police have the right to ask the person to step out of their car if they believe they had witnessed a crime going on. And in this case, Mr. Alexander was allegedly speeding and had dark tints too, so it could be said that the criteria were met. Now, this is where things take a turn. Watch as the sergeant started to highlight that Mr. Alexander was about to suck all the oxygen out of the air, implying that he was overly nervous and breathing heavily. What started off as a textbook traffic stop was now transitioning to something else. All right, so I understand it's a traffic stop. Not everybody gets stopped every day, and this can be a little uncomforting for people. I get that. Okay, my concern is that you are about to suck all the oxygen out of the air right now because you're breathing so heavy. All right, you're, you're so nervous. So why why would you be why would you be extremely or overly nervous with me for a simple traffic stop? I mean, because I was talking and I was busy, but I didn't know I was speeding. Okay. So I wasn't really sure why I was getting pulled over. Next, the sergeant started to question Mr. Alexander about his history with law enforcement, asking whether he had ever been arrested before. This was nothing more than an attempt to find reasons that would allow the sergeant to escalate the situation even further. Okay, have you ever been arrested before or anything like that? Yeah. Okay, I mean, you mind if I ask before? You can't get in trouble for telling me, I I'm scared. remember. Uh, I, I mean, I had DUI 20 years ago. DUI 20 years ago? Probably okay. about it. Okay, all right. Uh, when's the last time you were arrested? Do you remember that? Uh, no, it's been probably 20 years. 20 years? Probably okay. about anything 1999. Anything narcotics related at all? No. Note how the sergeant brought up the topic of narcotics. This plays a big role in this incident later down the line. Regardless, the sergeant then started to make it very obvious that he wanted to investigate Mr. Alexander over the suspicion of narcotics. Ridiculous enough, the sergeant asked about Mr. Alexander's use of contacts, which somehow led him to suspect that Mr. Alexander must be under the influence. Do you uh, wear glasses or contacts? Uh, contacts. Okay. All right. Are those colored contacts, or are your eyes always that kind of grayish, glassy, a little bit green, glassy? Green uh, eyes or whatever. Green eyes. Okay. Are you under the influence of any narcotics or alcohol today? No, sir. Okay. But right. so no. your pupils are like pinpoint, and that's why I asked. So, I mean, uh, have you taken any prescriptions or anything? You asked like me why I was nervous. First of all, I didn't realize I was speeding. So did you get that on radar or? I paced you, I was right behind you. Actually, okay. you passed me, as, okay. as I said I mean, it's earlier. possible, because I was talking well, and you were possible. in a conversation. It's possible, it's fact. Okay. Well, I mean, I wouldn't have just stopped you for nothing. I mean, I'm doing the speed limit and you passed me, so there's that. I mean, okay. that, that's in my line of work, that's called a clue. When I'm doing the speed limit and you pass me, that, that would be a, a very I mean, obvious I can't indicator of you. I with you. I, I, like I said, I might have been, but I don't remember. But, okay. 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 All right. And then you're saying about my tent, but yep. I'm pretty sure the tent's not illegal. Uh, I guarantee you it is. The state law is 28 percent, and that's a lot darker than 28 percent. front or the back? Any window. Okay. Well, I, I just didn't know. Okay. Well, so, and that's and I that's mean, common. You're asking me why I'm nervous. That's because I was kind of upset. You're asking me where I'm going and where I live, and I don't think that I'm allowed. I don't have to answer that. You absolutely don't. It's just casual conversation. Now, watch as the sergeant suddenly switch from suspecting Mr. Alexander of being under the influence of drugs to now suspecting that he may have something illegal inside his vehicle. The sergeant then asked Mr. Alexander whether he could search through the vehicle, but was immediately shut down as Mr. Alexander made it clear that he wouldn't allow it unless there was a search warrant for it. This was a good move, as it essentially protected Mr. Alexander from having his rights violated and prevented the sergeant from finding more reasons to ultimately arrest him, which was apparently his aim. So, okay. Do you have anything illegal in the car today? Anything no, like I said, I got a concealed carry permit, but other sure. than that, I don't have nothing illegal. Okay, so no, there's nothing illegal. Would you mind if I look? No, you may not look. You may not look. Unless you have a search warrant. Okay. I don't, but okay. I'm, I'm simply asking. I mean, your, your pupils are I mean, are I can open up the trunk, I can open the doors up, but I, I don't want you to go in and look through my car. Okay. Because it's, I don't feel like I have to. And, and you absolutely don't. I'm, I'm simply, see, in my line of work, what I do is I love doing this, okay? I, lo I love working on narcotics. And you're giving off a lot of precursors that could potentially lead up to narcotics. I'm not saying that you I mean, do, and I'm not fine. saying that you, you don't. Bring the dog if you don't, whatever, if you don't have anything. No, I don't have any narcotics. I don't I, do and I didn't say I mean, that you did. you're foaming at the mouth. You're asking me why I'm nervous. I mean, this is ridiculous. How Can is I it? please have a witness? Do you mind coming closer? Okay. 
So there's nothing you, illegal in the car. Are you a supervisor? Are you a supervisor? May I have a supervisor? You're talking to him. Okay. There is nothing illegal in my car whatsoever. Would you like to see my supervisor? I mean, what's the next step? Are, are, I'm just simply... Are going to get a ticket for uh, speeding or what? That's to be determined. I haven't made okay. up my mind yet. Okay. I'm simply asking for... I don't understand why I you're mean, getting you're so hostile with me. Because the way I'm being treated, I mean... How are you being treated? How, how do I look like I have narcotics? I didn't say you look like you had narcotics. I said you were displaying indicators. What, what, what are you saying? I have pupils. I'm nervous. I mean, I'm, I was upset because you're asking me where I'm going. That was just casual conversation. So here's the That's deal. Look, I'm not going to sit here and argue. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to argue with you. Okay. I'm simply asking what do you, you a few questions. What would you like me to do? Do you want me to open the trunk? Do you want me to? Even though it's rather clear that the sergeant did not have the legal right to search Mr. Alexander's vehicle at this point, we must understand exactly why that is. It's stated that an officer can legally look through your property if any of the following conditions are met probable cause, arrest, or inventory. Probable cause is when the officer has reason to believe that evidence of a crime will be found in your car, and when an arrest is made, officers also have the right to look through your car. Lastly, the police do not need your permission to search your car if they have impounded it and must inventory your property. Taking this into account, the only condition that the sergeant may try to meet would be probable cause, and that's exactly what he has been doing so far. Trying to find reasons to believe Mr. Alexander is in possession of drugs. He has one, just, just be cognizant of that. They're saying I have uh, suspicion of narcotics or something. Got it? I mean, you're welcome to look. There's absolutely nothing in here. Okay. Absolutely so nothing. Would you mind if I look in the car? I, I give you uh, the permission to view what's in my car. But, but okay, under here, no here's circumstances, the, here's the thing. are you allowed to just search my car without a search warrant? I mean, that's There's a few different ridiculous. ways that I can. Probable cause, okay, which I'm just asking you for What's verbal the consent. probable cause? Can you please explain to him what the probable I didn't, cause was? I didn't was? say there was. I you just did, asked you, you if you I could You said work. I had well, You're just getting defensive with me for asking common questions. All right, I'm just doing my job. I'm okay. doing what's called a patrol investigation. Okay. I made a stop for probable cause, Can which I the probable cause witness, was speeding. Sir? He is a witness. Can you please come closer and listen? Okay, thank you. He's recording. I'm recording. That, I know y'all are recording. That's fine. That's well within sure your right. There are steps to go to the station and get copies and, and everything of this because this is ridiculous. Okay, is this your wife, girlfriend, This friend? is my fiance, my girlfriend. Okay, okay. For five years. Okay, well congratulations. I'm I just mean, asking you several questions. All right, we'll just sit tight, I'll tell you so what. I'm going 50 miles an hour. At this point, since the sergeant had no luck trying to get permission to search the vehicle, he approached Mr. Alexander's fiance, who was situated inside the vehicle throughout the traffic stop. The sergeant asked to speak with her and she agreed. They engaged in a conversation discussing the ordeal, but it essentially led to nothing. It could be said that this was yet another attempt to find a reason to escalate the traffic stop, since the sergeant really didn't need to speak with Mr. Alexander's fiance. Ma'am, would you be willing to step out and speak with me out here? Possibly less of aggressive as he is. That would be lovely. Okay. So my name's Sergeant Holyfield with the Richmond Police Department. The reason y'all, you remember me? Dollar General. Dollar General? I, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't remember you. Uh, have I, we I, ever I, had a I, negative I, interaction before? I just had to call y'all for the time over there. I made sure you Okay, so when you called, did I show up and help you as best that you thought I probably could? Yeah. Okay, all right. Do you have any indication of me ever being rude, ugly, uh, too assertive, aggressive. Not to me. Okay. Not All right. To me. Well, I'm glad you feel that way. So thank you. I appreciate that. Well, look, here's the reason for the stop today. Okay. I'm doing the speed limit, 45 miles per hour. He comes past me. All right. That's an indicator that he's traveling over the posted speed limit at which I was traveling. Okay. That is called probable cause for a traffic stop. Okay. In which I have done. Furthermore, the window tint on the vehicle is darker than the legal limit. So there is further probable cause for a traffic stop. Okay. I'm asking simple questions. Hey, how you doing? How your mom and them? Where you coming from? Where you headed to? All right, I'm not doing this to pry into your life, to have any sort of privatized information of what you're doing. I don't care what y'all are doing, okay? But I have a goal in mind, okay? Well, the sergeant definitely cared. It clearly wasn't out of the blue that the sergeant wanted to know where Mr. Alexander was headed or if he was wearing contacts or not. All these questions were aimed at trying to find a reason that would lead the sergeant to believe that something was up. 
He is nervous. He's breathing. His pupils are dilated. His eyes are glassy and gray. Okay. Okay, and that's fine. So now I'm just asking him a few simple questions because now I have some indicators and I have some precursors. Okay, so now I'm looking for something different. Something different indeed. The sergeant now started to question Mr. Alexander's fiance about their relationship, his history with the law, and any known drug use, justifying his questions by stating that he had indicators and precursors to back them up. Clearly, the sergeant was adamant that he would search through the vehicle. How long have you known him? We've been together six years. Okay. Has he been arrested, arrested in the six years that y'all have been together? No. No, never in trouble or anything like that? He lives in Madison. Has he lived there the whole time? Yeah. Well, okay. not the whole time. He, he stayed in Florida somewhere. Okay. Is there, so that you know of, he's never been in trouble since y'all been together? I know he's never. Okay, I know so you been. know that? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to ask you the same thing. I, I don't know you. I, I'm sorry I don't remember you from Dollar General, but I just, I, I come That's into fine. contact with 80,000 people a day on this highway. Okay, so I do apologize. Do you, has he ever been known to you to use uh, 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 abuse prescription medications, smoke marijuana, any any heroin's, meths, anything like that? Okay, and so that that's all I'm looking for, just casual conversation. All right, there there are indicators leading me up to this question. Okay, I'm not just saying, ooh, hey, guy in the middle of the road, breathing heavy, whatever. But there are indicators that have led me down this path, which is why. I asked. So I get it. He's upset. This isn't something yeah. that people go through every day, and I. And I hate that he feels like I'm coming at him some type of way. But there's a reason why I'm asking these questions that I'm asking. Is this his vehicle or yours? This is his. Is and I, his? I can tell you, he probably like that because we, we, I'm from Simpson County, but I stay here. Sure. And yeah, here in Richland? Okay. Right here. Sure. And so, um, but I'm from Simpson County. Okay. And so, when we go to Simpson County, we don't got pulled up twice. And they asked him why he's with a blanket on Oh, that's irrelevant. Yeah, so, we like... Why are you pulling us over? What's the reason for you to pull us over? Different so, people and that, that might be why he is well, you know, so I, I want to remind you of this. All right, the window tint is darker than the legal limit. It's 28. Per, er, the legal limit is 28 percent. That's along the lines of five percent. Okay, there's no way possible that from where I was, I knew he was with a black woman. I didn't even know he was a white guy. So that's irrelevant to me. I'm I'm done. Uh, sure, absolutely. I'm prohibiting them from doing well, anything. I, 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 I said you I, can listen, look in my car. Listen to me. I, listen they don't have the right to search my car. Babe, listen to me. I understand. I understand, okay? And I understand how you get, you know, I understand how you get. They don't understand. They don't, they're, they're not. I mean, this guy's baby. reasonable. This guy's a jerk. They're not, they don't, they're not used to you. I am, so I know. When he, when he get like that, I can't remember. Really but by y'all being, by them being talking about this, they can do everything. I mean, I told him you can visually look in my car if you want to look in the car, but you're not going to dig through it and search through it. No. Well, there's a fine line between what you're telling me I can and can't do. Okay. I just asked you if I could look in your vehicle, okay? That would encompass me looking in the in the center console, the cup holders and stuff. Not an invasive search. I'm not trying to go through your car and pull out your bills that you've had stuffed in your glove compartment for the past four years. I don't care about that, okay? It's an invasive look into the, a non-invasive look into the vehicle. Unless there's something in there that would key me up to something else. I don't okay, well, hold on. Let me, let, hold on, hold on. Let me talk, okay? Let me talk. Okay, obviously I've known your fiance for a little bit and didn't realize she remembers me, I don't remember her. Okay, and we have established, the words came out of her mouth that in the interactions that we've had over the last several years when she was working here, is, are you still working there? No, it's not. Uh, we've never had a negative interaction. I do not I do not come at people some type of way that you perceive that I am, okay? You got defensive with me for doing my job, okay? I, stop, don't interrupt me again, please. I've been very, I've been more, more than restrained in trying to be very nice to you, okay? So here's the thing. I have, I've asked you questions and you've just been defensive with me the whole time, trying to do my job. All right, so I'm gonna ask you one more time. No. Do you mind if I look in your car or not? No. Okay, well then just sit tight. Don't go back in the car for now. Now that all hope was lost, the sergeant went back inside his patrol vehicle to call up several other officers to discuss the ordeal with them and find a canine unit. He claimed that Mr. Alexander appeared very suspicious, but he still didn't have enough clues to take this investigation any further. In other words, the sergeant admitted to prolonging this traffic stop beyond the necessary time frame and now wanted to seal the deal by having a canine sniff the car. Hello. Hey, puppy. 
What's up, bro? Uh, so this guy, he's given off a lot of indicators. I mean, first and foremost, just common, common you know, field interview questions. You know, just common casual conversation questions. Hey, you know. Where are you headed? Where are you coming from? Stuff like that. So he's throwing off indicators left and right. His pupils are dilated. His his face is... And he could just be pale complected. I mean, that, that's not uncommon. But he's nervous. He's about to suck all the oxygen out of the planet around me. Uh, so I asked him to step out and talk to him a little bit. And it just goes downhill from here. So now, I, you know, I don't have any smells. Uh, the only thing I have are behavioral indicators at this point. And his wife, or fiance, I actually remember her. Well, I don't really, but uh, she says that we have contact, been in contact with each other, um, Dollar General. So she's all right with me. She's okay with me. She likes me. But he does not. And uh, do you think, so he's refusing, he's refusing search. Cool. Well within his right to do so. At this point, I don't think I have enough to call a dog, but do you think do you see anything that I don't? Just based on the information that I'm telling you. I don't have any smells, indicators. I don't see anything in the vehicle that really keys me wanting to go further. I, I, I'm, you know, I'm on, I'm borderline that I don't have enough physical indicators in the vehicle, physical traits like any, any, any shake, anything like that. I don't have any, any odors. I don't have any cover smells. There's no trees hanging from the, you know, from the, uh, from the mirror or anything like that. There's no odor, uh, odor concealers, anything like that. All I have right now is behavioral indicators. And I mean, this dude's behavioral indicators are through the roof. Uh, so it, it may, it may, it could be a substance that I can't smell. Well, yeah, I know, but I mean, there, I know timeline-wise, you know, constitutionality, how long are we going to be able, what's a reasonable amount of time, which I think, I think, we don't have a dog available, so I'm going to have to call Pearl. He's not available. He's, he's, he's in McGee. That's, that's, that's been one of my considerations from the get-go, is I knew ours isn't available. So, I mean, at this point, I know I can. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna see if you saw something that maybe I didn't. Hey, hey, bud. Uh, do you have Brandon Jordan's new number? I don't have it, and I need his dog. Um, I have a number for him. I'll send it to you. I don't know if it's a new number, but I I think it is because I texted him a couple weeks ago, so I'll send you the one that I've got. Okay, thank you. What's up, man? Oh, no, shit. Getting ready for the radio? Oh, shit. I was going to see if you could come bring me your dog if you were available. Yeah, man. We, we got to go work the radio, man. Nah, I, don't, I don't blame you. Go make that money, brother. That's cool. Uh, Cody, Cody's out, and uh, uh, Cody's out. And I need. I got a guy refusing, and I... Man, his behavioral indicators are through the roof, BJ. They are off the chain. I don't have any physical indicators yet, but yeah. his behavioral indicators are through the freaking roof. And, uh, uh, um, maybe working. <laughs> I don't know of anybody. Tanner McHugh just got off a little while ago, so I, I, I don't, and I don't even know anything about his dog. No, I saw it. I got a guy stopped, and he's, uh, I don't know. I got a warm and fuzzy on it, brother. But he, uh, he, uh, he shut down on me and uh, got defensive. And I don't have any like physical indicators, but dude, his behavioral indicators are just skyrocketed. And uh, it, I, I think there's something here. He's just shutting me down. I don't have enough. I don't think I have enough right now to go any further with it than I can. So I was looking for a dog, but it'll be all right. If he is dirty, well. We'll end up getting him one day, I'm sure. As we've just heard, the officer claimed that if Mr. Alexander was dirty, implying that he indeed carried narcotics, then they would eventually catch him. This simply proved his ill intentions as now he had no other option but to let Mr. Alexander go. Alright, Mr. Alexander. 
Issue me two citations today, one for speed and 10 over, and one for window tint. Give you court date of March 29th. You have on that date or up to it to pay for citations. If you pay, to them, pay for them prior to that date, you don't have to be in court. If you don't, uh, you need to call ahead and let them know that you're not going to make it. Uh, they will gladly rearrange or make a payment plan if you'd rather do that. If you no call, no show, a warrant will be issued for your arrest and we'll just come pick you up, okay? Thank you. Ultimately, Mr. Alexander was given citations for speeding and illegal window tents. Under the video uploaded by Mr. Alexander on his YouTube channel, he stated that the sergeant was upset because I told him I had nothing illegal and upset because I refused search of inside of my car. I offered that he could view inside to see I had nothing to hide but couldn't go through my car on the inside. Mr. Alexander also added that the sergeant interrogated about why I have precursors and indicators of narcotics and when he couldn't find a dog, he had to let me go. As of the date of this recording, Mr. Alexander has not stated whether he will be pursuing a complaint or any other legal action. Be sure to check out our previous video where we cover another outrageous police encounter.